Hello everybody, how you doing? It's me Paddy from Across the Shock and uh, you're very welcome back to the channel. And this is going to be the start of a, it's the start of the new year for me because I'm going to start doing this. I've just been dying to get at this new stone I bought and I'm dying to see how it works. So I said I was going to do plenty of sharpening and I am in the new year. Plenty of it. I'm going to do maybe not just sharpening but maybe fixing up older knives what I do to them and things like that just to try and change it up and make it a bit more interesting so I picked the crappiest knife I have in my collection to do it on and this is it now this cost me about eight pound from a company called Whitby I don't know whether they're still that price now to be honest I've had it quite a long time but it is a really, now I'll have to say the mirror polish on it is fantastic for an eight pound knife. Uh, really, really super job. The grind is pretty level all the way. No, it isn't a wavy grind much. It's got a hardwood handle. It has got a lovely back spring. They're all stainless steel. Uh, and this is a, a, a cheap stainless steel. These are made in China for a company over here in the UK. And if he's selling them at the 10 pound mark, Let's be honest, it's not going to be the best in the world. So we're talking probably a Rockwell of maybe 54, 55, I think. But I'm going to sharpen it and we'll see what it's like when it sharpens. Construction wise, it's really pretty good. It is got a lovely back spring. Listen to that. It is right up the hay diddle diddle. And I, I just bought this for online. This was online from the shop in the UK called Whitby. Uh, and he sells lots of cheap Chinese knives. Nearly all his knives are made in China and then stamped with his name. This one doesn't even have a stamp, so they couldn't care. <laughs> they couldn't care. But you can see the wooden handles. Let me just show you. They stick up over the top. There and there. You can see just here. They stick right over the top. It's a lovely, it's just a bit of hardwood. I'm not sure what it is, but it's a nice bit of hardwood. It's reasonably well hafted, but the, let me just let you hear this. It's a bit rough all around, so it needs sanded down. These need taken down to the bolsters to make them look half reasonable. But, I mean, the bolster is not wonderful. It's got this small little pin through it, um, and you've only got two pins on the thing. This must just be glued down onto it. But, nonetheless, it's a great one to start with because I wanted to use a really cheap one just to take the top layer off the stone and, and, and make it smooth it out so for when we do our i'm going to start with like a 7 cr 17 steel and each time i do one i'm going to go up the steel to see how far this thousand grit shapton ceramic whetstone goes now shapton are a really well known for high their high-end ones which are on a glass base and it's ceramic and, and that'll be a better you know ceramic than this but I was watching Outdoors 55. You don't watch him. Great channel. I just love his no-nonsense channels. I'll put this channel and I'll take him to the, the video where he used this stone and said that he, he used it on nearly every range of stone going up, uh, nearly every range of knife steel going up and it worked really well. This is not a stone for reprofiling. This is, it would take you a long time, especially as the steel gets harder. For something like this, I'm hoping it's going to do it because this has a problem I'm going to talk about. So I'll, I'll put a, a link to his video, but I'm just going to use this stone on all the knives. This, it's going to be this, and when I'm just doing a basic steel, I've got the strap, a, a strop with a green compound on it, because that's all I need. I don't need diamonds. Once you get up into that S30V, you'd, it needs diamond, diamond strop to get a really keen edge on it. You know, because this the green compound's not going to really cut S30 and upwards. So we'll be using that right up till we get the S30 and then I have a diamond stone which I use a diamond spray for. That's for my higher end knives. So let's get started. The one thing I want to show you in this knife, if you see that, that is quite a good edge. Can you see it's quite a good edge? It's a pretty good angle for this sort of a knife. But when I turn it over to that side, the edge nearly disappears. And up near the top, there's next to nothing. That is quite common with cheap knives. The edges aren't at the same angle. So what that what's that what's that do? Here's what that does to a knife. And I'm sure you've heard this with a knife out of the box. And where there's nothing at the bottom, it just tears. So the apex has to meet like that. If your apex is a different angle and you're down there, you're never going to get that true sharpness in a knife. So that's good. I'm gonna so on this side which is the opposite to the uh, nail neck. I'm going to start on this side first 
and lay the angle back and see if we can get a better angle. It's not that far out, but it makes a whole difference to when you're doing uh, uh, sharpening, is to get that angle as near as possible to the same size. They're always maybe a little bit off. It's not going to matter, but you want them as close as you possibly can to get that really keen edge. And even on a cheap knife, you can get a really keen edge. Now, I don't know whether it's going to be gummy or mucky or whatever. I have no, I have no clue. I haven't sharpened it. This is as it came from the shop. I've never done anything with it. It's been lying there. So, But it's a lovely looking knife with that worn clip blade. Lovely wooden handle. I mean, by the time I do this up and add a bit of lovely um, oils to the, this wood, it'll start to look a little bit nicer. And I want to make sure that I can make this into a perfectly usable EDC knife, which will do most of our job, most of our tasks for a knife that was under £10. There you go. Let's see if I can prove that point. Now, I'm going to bring you down and show you the stone. This is the stone we're going to use. Let me just get this. Oh, I'll need to move this back a wee bit. It's very hard to get an angle. And I'm going to, be, you know, maybe over the weeks and days that we're doing this, I shall try my best to get it better each time. Now, there we go. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, what we have is the stone. It's a thousand grit stone. We'll take it out of the box. And the name of the stone is a uh, Shapton Hano Kuramaku. Yeah, it's Chinese. No idea. And it's a 1000 grit. And it is, there we go. That's a stone. It's on Amazon. It costs about £48 something. So it's quite dear. But if you're going to buy a stone and you want to try to learn sharpening, get a half decent one. Really, it makes such a difference. So this is the stone here. So the nice thing about this box is when you close this up again, there you go. This stone fits, fits exactly on the top of the box and it fits in there. And that's, that's it. You don't have to buy a base for it. That's it, ready for shortening. And it's a nice height off that you can move your hand up and down and you're not going to hit the table. It's high enough off the table. There you go, you see the difference. So super, all in one stone, done. If you're not sure about angles, you can buy these little angles. There's one for ceramic stones like that. And there's also one if you want to put it on your strop. Now, let me just see if I can get this lifted. You can put it on your strop or this is magnetic. So if you're using, a, um, let me just show you while I'm talking. If you're using one of these little diamond stones, these thin ones, that will stick on there so you can check your angles and get them. Here's what I suggest. <clears throat> right, I'm going to use this one here on here. No, that's a sticky up one. I'm going to use this. So it lies nice and flat on there. I'm going to sharpen mine at 17 degrees. It's got 14, 17, 20 and 25 angles there. And this is how I find my angles. I like to sharpen at, at, in these chibi knives about 17, between 17 and 20. So the 17, I lay it on there and I run it down flat until it hits a stone. Then I take this out of the way. I put my thumb up against it, right? Oh, you're not really seeing, but I put my thumb up against it there and I, I just take a look at where it is in my thumbnail, measure it, and then I know that's the angle I'm going to sharpen at. So every time I go to this side, I know roughly where it's going to go. And roughly is all right. Don't get too caught up on it. Roughly is all right. So I know where that angle is. And then when I go on the other side, if, if you need to go on the other side, set it down, slide it down. Oh, let me just get that over the edge. So same thing again. You slide it down and then remove this. And then I put my finger here where I hold it. I, my finger is just on the back of it. So I know where that's roughly going to sit when I'm coming back down again. So that is going to give me the same angle on both sides. Now, after a while of doing that, you just get used to it. And I always check when I'm sharp and I always have a look and check that I've got my bevel nice and level all the way along to keep it that way. And if I want to get more of a, uh, if I want to make this a sharper angle, if, I, if I'm not getting right to the back of it and making it, uh, I'm trying to, if I need to drop the bevel to get the, the same edge as the front, it's just easy. You drop it down to where you think it's right. Put your finger there and then you'll know the next time that's where I want to feel. If that makes it, I hope that makes some sense. But 
Anyhow, any questions you can ask me afterwards and I'll give you detailed pictures if you want of where I do it. But that's it. They're, they're from Sharp, what's it called? Uh, Sharpal. S-H-A-R-P-A-L. Sharpal. And I think they cost literally about five quid or something. They're, they're cheap. But it gives you an angle if you're not used to it and you want to see what the angle is and it gives you an idea of what it is. The joy of this stone is it's splash and go. You don't have to soak it for 15, 20 minutes before you use it and then constantly lather it in water. It will soak some water in uh, and, and I suggest just using water. Um, so it's literally just a case of, look, you can see that beading, can you? <laughs> That's what, I need to get that broke in a little bit. And this is what this will do to it. So I get my hand and I just give it a rub all around it so that there's water on it. And it really is a joy of not having to soak. And you can see where it will soak in in bits and some bits it won't. So there we go. I'm going to take that down to the spray because it's bouncing off it. Yeah, let me just do that. Oh, there we go. So you don't have to have it swimming in water, but just keep this, the top surface going. So without further ado, I'm going to just show you how I sharpen. I can't show you every angle. I don't have the cameras for it, but I just want to, I'm doing this in, in real time. So I'm going to show you how I check. So even though this is a straight blade and I could go that way, I like to sharpen from this angle. I don't know why it is. It's just the way I was taught to sharpen. And I, and, and I don't, I haven't changed it. I just, so I'm literally, I don't have to lift this blade off the uh, the table, at all, off the table, off the stone when I'm doing it. Don't lift it off. You don't have to do this. You don't have to go off. Just there. And I put my finger just over the top of it where I knew that I wanted it to go. And then I give it a nice little rub to get her started. And I'm just going back and forward on the stone. So I'm not having to do anything. I'm not having to think in it. I'm moving my body back and forward because that's the way I do it. And I don't have to move it. So I'm keeping this at a lovely angle. You can start to see the black in the water there. So I can lift that up. A bit. There you are. You can see the black in the water. That is the metal coming off this knife. I told you, you know, it's, it's a thousand grit stone. So you can see the metal coming off and it's coming off a lot from the tip where I say, you can sort of see that it's coming off a lot from the tip where there was next to nothing on the other side of it. There was no angle. Uh, that's why I tore the paper. So I'll just take this off now. And what I want to do is look, wow. Oh, <laughs> that's really good. For, for straight away, that is really good. You can sort of see the shine up at the top end where there was no tip and it shows you how soft it is but it actually shows you how good this is cutting so i've got a, a benefit of both here and um, the center part of it hasn't really touched the stone yet so it must have been high up here and low down there or whatever so it's good so i'm going to put it back down again get that angle again and then i'm just going to keep going up and down now i started with a straight edge because obviously that's the easiest you don't have to turn around to get the belly of a knife. Um, and I've done that on purpose. So you can see now, if you see the stone starting to get level on both sides. So when I look over now, I'm starting to see that the middle part of this knife is starting to hit down. It's starting to meet. So that's going to level this a lovely flat surface at a consistent angle all the way down. So I'm just going to keep going. This stone is lovely. And you can feel, unlike a lot of the, 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 the expensive Japanese, stone, the Japanese stones, if you go off, if you lift this up too much and you come and you go too deep, you can take a chunk out of the stone. This is ceramic. It's not going to do it as easy. You know, as long as you don't put pressure down and pressure is your enemy. When you're sharpening, pressure is the enemy completely. So we'll just give keep doing this until I feel as if I've got the right angle but you can see now it's not just at the top it's all the way down so let's just give you a wee quick look at that wow that angle is coming down quite you can see how much deeper it is than before there we go there's still the bit in the middle really hasn't been hit at all I'm just going to feel for a burr on this side. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's starting to get a burr there. The center really bit is not. So I'm just going to keep going until what the burr is. And we're, I'm going to go through. This is for a basic beginner because you have to start this way. Otherwise, the series will mean nothing. The burr is when you're shaving this here. And that's what it's like. You're shaving the top of the stone. It's forcing the metal up onto the top side. Yeah, does that make sense? You're shaving it and you're forcing the metal up to the top. And that's what's called the burr. You'll get a little fine line of metal that comes across the top and I tend to look for it you can do it under a magnifying glass if you like but I like to use the end of my nail and I just run it along and when you can feel it rough all the way along then you know you've got the burr the whole way up the knife and you never want to change uh, you never want to start the other side till you've got that burr all the way up on the top because then that gives us the angle we have to hit and to take that burr off when we go to the other side but it's going really nice I'm, it's, I'm not ready for it it's i really can do with another little bit here i just want to get both edges down right i'm putting it at quite a big angle degree but that's because for me in my life i just want to cut simple things like cardboard a bit of string a bit of rope a bit of nine uh the 450 paracord so i'll just get it sitting nice get my finger where it's nice I can feel it cutting it you can actually feel and hear when the knife is cutting I know I'm not getting my hands here at all let me see if I can get turn this around let me get it right so I can feel it sitting on the angle I put my finger where I thought it was and then I don't have to move it does that a bit better for you so so as it gets down to the same edge you'll start to see not bad still got this bit in the middle here which is not coming down so i'm going to lift my angle a little bit to see if i can get down to it so i'll put it down i'll lift it up to where the angle was and i'll just give it another wee tilt and now i'm just seeing if i can get this middle bit so i'll keep my finger in the middle bit that adds that ever so light bit of pressure Ooh. Oh, that's not bad at all that's not bad at all let me just give this a bit dry so how I check it is I hold the knife up and I just rub my nail level with the bevel and what I want to do is feel it being rough it's lightly rough you don't want to feel a big chunk because then you've done it for too long and you're just wasting you're taking off too much steel but to me when I look at this now, that is not bad at all on that side. It is much better than it was before. And do you want to know what? I'm not going to, I'm going to, I was going to try and cut corners there. No, I'm not. I'm just going to do it a little bit longer at that higher angle to make sure I get that burr. That burr in the middle isn't great. So I can keep going for a little bit just till I get, I have a terrible habit of shutting, cutting, cutting corners on a video. And then you end up with a knife that's just not sharpened properly. And I don't want to do that. And sometimes <laughs> a couple of strokes, that's done exactly what I wanted it to do. Sometimes that's the way you think, oh, I'll just change now. But that little bit that I done made this now, it's level all the way along. I don't know whether you're going to see that, but it's pretty level all the way along that blade. So... I'm happy with that. So now I can change over to the other side. And again, let me just oh, wipe this off. I like to clean the stone often while I'm doing the, the sharpening. So I always have a wee cloth there and then I get fresh on it. And the other thing I like to do is when I'm doing the other side is take it over so that my stone is getting equal use on, on the sides. So I'll just take it over the other side there. That's it. And then what I'm going to be doing, let me just get that here. So I'm going to be doing exactly the same. So I'll get it there. And then I'm going to get my thumb where I need my thumb to be. Now you can hear that. 
that's the burr that I'm talking about and it takes a couple of strokes to get that burr off there we are you can hear it can you hear that's quieting them down now oh I've gone to my you don't have to take it off <laughs> that's the way I would already sharpen but going for you I'm going to keep it like this uh, it's memory you know it really is just memory so I can hear it cutting so again because of this was already bigger uh, I can see on this I don't know if you can see it on this one there's a big heavier chump where it had been sharpened unevenly on that side and now when I've sort of taken the other sides and I'm hitting them you can see that there's it's a deeper bevel here I'm not going to try and chase that because that's just going to take the metal back what I'm going to do is just try and get my level best to get the burr all the way along on the other side so once I've got the burr I've got the tip of the apex so and by changing over you're getting the fresh stones on this side tipping this up just a wee bit right let's just see so now you know I've been sharpening on this side so it's the other side where the burr is going to come and again just with my fingernail that was coming it needs a bit more just moving this water about so I've got a nice even surface for it. Right. And again, I was sharpening this underside so I need to check that the burr is on the top here. That's pretty much up and down that knife already. So yeah, again, I thought it was going to be soft. I'm starting to see where the angles were, were wrong on it. So this is never maybe going to look perfect because it is a bit wavier than what I thought. And what do you think and what's real is, is, can be very different. So what I'm going to do now is go to the other side and I'm going to do one, two, and then I'm going to this side and I'm going to go one, two. And then I'm just going to come now one, two, three. I don't know why I'm saying this because I haven't got a set number. I'll just keep doing this one at a time. Once I've taken that burr off the first time, now I want this just to take the apex so that it really becomes a really quite a sharp edge. This should not leave this table until it's sharp. And the nice thing about doing this live, I do it slowly because in real life I would be doing this quite fast. But when you're starting to learn, there is absolutely no rush. And when you rush, you tend to push down hard and that, that's where you get the bad mistakes. So again, I'm just doing it at the angle. I can hear it running nice and smooth. So far, I love the feeling of this stone. And once you've got a bit of experience and you, you use different stones, it's amazing how many stones don't have any feedback or they feel heavy and gluggy. I mean, this is a good stone. I can tell straight away that it's a good stone. I know Shapton made it, so the chances were it was going to be because they make good stones. But it seems perfectly flat. I haven't felt any little bumps. I haven't felt any little imperfections that you normally do, other than just that sort of top layer. And it's gone now. I've got a lovely, lovely stone to work on. It feels nice. You can hear it. It's like rubbing across the top of a tile. It's just beautiful. So let's just see how we're getting on. So there we go. That was the dodgy edge. You can see now it's a lovely edge across there. This is the top edge that's a little bit heavy where it went there, but they look the same now. 
Does that make sense? The top looks as if it's got a tip, the same as that tip. So we'll give it a try and see how it is. And again, this might not be, you know, when you're doing it the first time, this mightn't go as quick for you. And it mightn't go as quick for me. I have no idea. So that's the joy of me doing it full, you know, live. So let's see what it's like going through the paper now. Definitely a huge improvement on what it was. Huge improvement. But it's still a little bit sticky. So I just keep going until I get rid of that little bit of stickiness now. It just needs that refined. Okay, so again, I'm just going to show you the way I would normally do this. I'm going to do five on each side because I want to keep it, the, you know, the same. I don't want to do it. You can see how much muck this this has taken off. So the stone's working, you know, it is taking <coughs> and this being a softer steel, you know, it's taking a good a good chunk of the top off it. Now, where's my little bit of paper? There we go. Let's just see how this is now. Difference, can you see it? Just going that little bit longer makes a huge difference. I'm going a wee bit faster, I'm cutting the time down. <clears throat> I would literally do this in probably a third of the time that I've taken to do it on this video because I just batter on, I go faster. I even go faster than that. But because I know not to put weight down and I keep it light, that's the difference. So, so far, that is a nice edge on the wee knife. So I'm really finished with a stone. You could keep going a bit longer if you're not sure. But do you know what I mean? I'm not going for a mirror edge. Because I don't need a mirror edge in my knife. And let me tell you, the thing about a mirror edge, if you're you're just in the sharpening, a mirror edge is only as good as its first cut. <laughs> and that, that is the truth. A mirror edge is only as good as its first cut. Because after you've cut with it, you've taken that hair splitting edge off it. So it looks nice. And if you're going to put a knife in a display cabinet, which I don't, they're lovely to have in a display cabinet with a mirror edge and all polished and shiny. Beautiful. That's not my kind of hobby collecting. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit more lazy. I just like a good edge on it. Uh, you know, and like this, I mean, th this would maybe destroy somebody that, you know, it's not perfect. I mean, really, there's a bit of a, a deep, a deeper gouge there where it had been done badly at the, at the factory. But honestly... <laughs> Tell me what this is not going to cut in an, in an average EDC day. I, I, I can't think of anything it wouldn't cut. So I'm just going to clear this mess up because I don't want my strop to get wet. And I'm going to bring the strop in and show you how I strop. I hope you enjoyed that. It, this stone looks fantastic. Just on first going. Now that doesn't mean it is. We'll see as I go up the uh, the grades of, of knife. Um, but to be honest with you... That sharpens about the same as 7CR. I think I might start at 8CR uh, on the next one to see, to take a better jump because, I mean, that's a cheap steel, but it sharpens something like 7CR. Now, I haven't sharpened a whole lot of 7CR, but it's not it's not the most edge-retentive um, steel. So, I like the Kyla. I don't, I don't do it down here, so I lift it up in my hand. Make sure my fingers are completely out of the way and this part of your thumb because as you come along sometimes you can slice out of the knife's a bit bigger. So keep it down so that when you go across it, I'll just get my, my wee ruler here. And I, I, I'm, I'm teaching a lot of people to suck eggs and I'm sorry, but you want this so that anything that comes off the edge is not going to hit any of your digits or your palms. So and it sounds silly, but just be, just check. I mean, I, I always do. I have to say it's the one thing I always do. Now, 
everybody has different ways of stropping. Isn't that always the way? There's not one that you just <laughs> So in this knife, I'm just going to do the very basic and this will be good enough for you or if you're just starting. So what I do is I set the edge of this knife right on the angle roughly of where it is. I'm not going to put any pressure on it. All I want this to do is to give it a really nice fine edge. So I'm going to put it down there and I just gently run the knife down. Gently run the knife down. Do not poke in. You see all these wee scratches? This is wee bits of metal that's on the end of it. And I can literally just sort of do the edge like that that stops it. But I just put it on there. Keep it at roughly the same angle as you let it. Absolutely no pressure. Be five or six on one side. Right, again, this is just me. And then just at, once I've done that five or six, I just then do one either side. Turn it over. Roughly just lay it down. It doesn't matter. This will not damage as long as you don't put any pressure down. You can blunt the knife by putting pressure because what the pressure does, this is leather. So there's give in it. And if you push the knife down in it, it's moving the leather up around the edge of your blade. And it can just come up and blunt your blade. Because when you want a sharp edge, it's a very fine edge. And if you're pushing it down, it blunts it by when you put the pressure on the leather, it'll just turn up over it. So really, really light pressure. And just do that. Again, I like going from tip to stern when I'm doing it. And just really ever so lightly just come across it. And the last couple you do, literally no pressure at all. Just let it slide along there. There we go. That's a nice sharpened. I don't know how long how long have we been on here. Oh god, thirty one minutes. So I've been talking for probably thirty one minutes. I would have this done in in this sort of blade, maximum ten minutes. But I'm doing quite a bit of blethering and talking. So this is what the final edge will be. Okay, it's really it's a lovely edge. This will cut anything I wanted to cut. Let me just get a little bit of leather out, which is always a good test because this is a the sort of knife that you'd want to. There's a little bit of leather about that thickness and we'll see how it cuts it. There you go. Straight through it and went into the mat. I could feel it going into the mat. So it's sharp enough to do all my EDC tasks. And it didn't even blunt the tip off it. So there you go. That's that little knife. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do a full video of me doing it up. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to file down, just get some sandpaper, file down the bolster so that they meet that there. I'm going to oil this handle. And to be honest with you, that's all I need. Oh, sorry. I'm going to do inside so that you don't feel that. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. And this then will become... An absolutely fantastic EDC knife that costs about £10. There you go. There's one to give. If you've got a youngster, there's one to give him. It's easy to sharpen. It takes minutes to sharpen it. And I've been waffling on quite a lot. So literally between five and ten minutes, it would either have this sharpened. And the joy with this stone is you don't have to soak it. It's a proper working stone, but it's ceramic. It's harder than the, the normal gritted stone, which, which you can take chunks out of if you're not experienced enough. So that's why I went for this one, so I can do as many different uh, blade steels and see just how high I can get up using one stone, a thousand grit stone. This is not for reprofile. This is not for when you let your knife go completely dull. This is just to keep your knife sharp for EDC. So in the space of what, this is about 34 minutes, I could probably have four or five of these back to sharpness again. It's It really is that simple. And a couple of wee stops, maybe five each side, it's all you need to get this sharpened. I hope you enjoyed that. If there's some things that you didn't agree with, please say. I mean, I don't do it right. I just do it the way Stephen does it. I mean, I was taught, but I watched Jeff Jewell and it's his philosophy when he's doing it. Jeff's so much more professional. He goes for so much longer than me and his edges will last longer than mine. But that's Jeff. Jeff is a sharpener. His whole life is around, not his whole life, that's terrible. His whole hobby is around the sharpener. That's what he enjoys. He enjoys the knives too, but... His joy is finding sharpening stones that he likes and he moves on. He tries all sorts. So I learned from him and I learned the basics. 
is the basics is what I want to know is I want to get that apex and I want the two sides of the knife being the same size going up to the apex which will give me a better angle quicker there we go and a simple little strop and there you are you're ready you're a knife sharpener I want to see you doing it eventually there'll be there'll be a course and questions at the end of all this only Jagan, just thank you so much for coming along I hope you enjoyed it um I've enjoyed doing it again I always enjoy these little sessions and if one person gets something from it I'm more than happy so I'll put the name of that stone down below and Outdoors 55 if you go and check his video on this stone uh, he is a much more um, he knows much more about sharpening than I do I am a basic sharpener but I'm a basic happy sharpener because I haven't found a knife yet since I've learned to do it properly that I haven't been able to sharpen and get a decent edge on and that's all I need, a decent edge on a knife. Okay, right, that's enough rambling in it. Yeah, take it away. Bye night. Play music. La 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 la.